going to take you live to the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. He's been attending a drought summit. He's speaking in the central west of New South Wales in Orange. ...with the New Zealand government um, in supporting um, both there and our nationals uh, who have been caught up in this event. Um, right now, uh, the Australian government, through our embassy, is uh, looking to, to deploy, working with the Chinese government consular officials into Hubei province, into Wuhan. This is essential uh, to assist us as we then consider the further options of the support that we can provide to Australian citizens uh, who are in Wuhan and in, in Hubei province more broadly. I want to commend in particular um, uh, the Chief Medical Officer and, and all of those uh, in the state and territory governments who are working so closely together to ensure uh, that our response uh, to this uh, virus um, as it becomes more widespread in China and as we see more cases confirmed. There are, uh, prior to this press conference, uh, just five cases confirmed in Australia, but there are obviously a number of other um, tests that are being conducted on some other people who have presented. Um, these are being done in a very orderly way. The treatment facilities are in place, and I'm advised that uh, by the Chief Medical Officer uh, that the capabilities and the treatment um, uh, platforms that are, are there uh, are more than meeting the need, uh, but we're continuing to provide advice, working with schools, with universities, uh, with uh, uh, the tourism industry and others to ensure uh, the information is getting to people about this virus and that they're in a position then to seek medical attention in the appropriate way uh, should they be presenting with any of these symptoms. Uh, so this is something that the government is monitoring extremely closely. I was saying National Security Committee is meeting every few days. We'll meet again on Friday um, to ensure that uh, we manage this response. We're working closely uh, with the states and territories and we'll continue to do that uh, to keep Australians safe. Um, but I would encourage Australians to, to go about their business, to, to understand and listen to the advice that's being received. And, and if you've had any contact uh, with that area um, directly, uh, then the uh, steps you need to take are fairly obvious. And uh, for those schools and for universities and others, I want to thank you uh, for the way you've been cooperating with both state and federal authorities in getting information out uh, to your students um, as they prepare to go back to school and back to university a little later and the appropriate precautions are being taken. And I can take some questions on that when we get to questions a little later. Um, but the reason for being here today, Australia has suffered terrible natural disasters over the last 12 months. And it is over the last 12 months that I refer to because it was about this time last year that those devastating floods hit North Queensland. And all year, as it has been the case for many years, drought has continued to ravage our country and in more recent times where drought has been such a key contributing factor, we've seen these devastating bushfires and our response to natural disasters uh, encompasses all of these things. While there's obviously been a lot of focus on the response to the terrible bushfires in recent months, I want to assure all Australians, all Australians who have been devastated and impacted by the terrible drought that has ravaged our country, not for months, but for years and years and years, that you have not left our thoughts and our plans and our responses for a second. Um, we, you are very much keenly in our focus in ensuring that you continue to get the support that you need to get through this drought, to get to the other side and to rebuild. Uh, to rebuild for when the rains come and, and while we have seen some pleasing rain in, in, in very recent times, we know that's not enough to bust the drought. Even here, as you see a green tinge around us, uh, that isn't always the case and uh, we need drought quenching rains and they have not yet come. Uh, but it is nice to see kids playing in puddles. We haven't seen that for a while. And it's nice to see the dam over there, which not that long ago was bone dry, um, seeing some water in the bottom of it today. So there is hope. And we've got to build for that time of hope and prepare for that time of hope. And that's why the, uh, the Drought and Flood Agency, which convened today in, in Orange, not far from here, was focused on the next range of plans that we need to be able to deliver to support drought-affected communities right across the country. And today we are making two specific announcements, uh, and I'll ask Minister Little Proud and Minister Teen to go into two of those. But the Drought Communities Program was one of our first responses to the drought, and that was putting a million dollars into councils uh, in drought-affected areas right around the country, including right here in Blaney. 
and that was designed to get money into these communities to put people into work. Uh, there, were, there are some 18 contractors that have worked on projects here in Blaney, 13 businesses including the one where I announced the original Trout Communities Program in Blaney, um, uh, providing, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, piping and various other materials uh, to this, this works here. And there are, there are many other contractors who have been involved as well. Um, that program has been immensely successful. Uh, it will now re extend to 180 councils um, to ensure that important local projects, important local works, bringing communities together, providing them support at one of their most difficult times so we can see these towns and these regions and these districts survive this awful drought. Uh, the other approach, so that's a $47 million extension to that program and I'll allow Minister Little Proud to run through uh, how that's being extended today. The other program uh, that we're extending today is the support we're giving to schools, independent schools, um, to support uh, drought affected families to keep their kids in school. Uh, this is so important. I remember when I went up to Quilpe um, with David um, a, a day or so after I became Prime Minister. And one of the issues that was raised uh, by the Tullys there on that day was, and it was, the, it was the moment that brought the tear to Mrs Tully's eye, and that was, what am I going to do about my kids in school and their thoughts for their kids? And that is the truth for so many drought-affected families uh, living on properties and stations all around the country. Um, school provides that stability, it provides that assurance, it provides uh, that rhythm. Uh, my kids went back to school today and uh, I know how important that is in a, in a family's life. And so to ensure that we're directing an additional $10 million in assistance to those schools, they know their students best, they know the families who need the help the most, and that's how this program uh, will continue to work. So we've doubled that funding to ensure that parents can have greater confidence about ensuring their kids can stay in school and uh, they can keep focusing on the very hard tasks that they have uh, dealing with the drought on their properties. Um, so with that I'm going to ask David to go a little bit more detail on the DCP program and then uh, Minister Tian will speak uh, to uh, the issue of the education program. And then I'm going to ask Fiona uh, to say a, a few words about how uh, the broader drought uh, program um, is impacting and, and supporting and, uh, and then Andrew G, the local member, will sum it up. Thank you. Thanks PM. Well thanks PM and obviously uh, this is an important step uh, in uh, our suite of measures towards uh, making sure we get as many communities through this drought because the drought extends past the farm gate into the communities that support them and what you're seeing here is a local example and what we're announcing today with the drought communities program is empowering local councils to make those decisions. We want this to be locally led not Canberra led. And what we are saying is local government knows their communities better than we do. Uh, so we're empowering them with a million dollars to go out there and to invest in legacy infrastructure that will create jobs uh, and leave something uh, for the future. Uh, so it's important that we continue on that. And today we're saying for the first time we're going to Western Australia. This drought has spread like a cancer from the east coast up in Queensland, right down the east coast and now right across the Nullarbor into Western Australia and in fact also into the Northern Territory. Uh, for the first time those shires are also being recognised uh, for the impact this drought is having on them and their communities. And we'll continue to be agile. This adds uh, to the over eight billion dollars that the federal government has committed to this drought response and we'll continue to do more as we've said with the fire uh, situation we will continue to do whatever it takes this is about people not about money and we'll continue to make sure we invest in these communities because when it does rain they will recover uh, obviously we took the advice of EY and the EY report uh, we have put up uh, in a transparent uh, way up online to make sure that uh, the recommendations that they put forward with uh, respect to some of the changes to the drought community program are there for all to see and they made a number of recommendations that we've accepted in terms of the simplified model uh, and that goes around the weather in fact they've become they've recommended that we take now two consecutive years of, of rain deficiency rather than one in two and they've also uh, recommended that there be a scaling. For those populations under 1,000, those shires under 1,000, they should get $500,000 and those above should get a million. So we've accepted those recommendations. But in light of that, in light of the harshness of those recommendations, we've allowed uh, for the agricultural employment to also include the downstream employment. So those in the processing sector, in abattoirs, to be included in, in our total agricultural employment data number, but also reduce that from 17% to 12% and allow and prescribe a defined uh, uh, allowance for the Minister to make uh, a decision uh, to down to 7%. 
Uh, and obviously that takes into a number of accounts uh, around the impacts uh, the these drought is having, but also other natural disasters like fires. So we've tried to make sure that we reach as many communities that need this as we possibly can, but we've got to draw uh, a definite line in the sand about uh, where this program is targeted, because it is ultimately about stimulating the communities that are doing it the hardest from the drought, because they are supported primarily by agriculture and agri agricultural pursuits. Uh, so all I can say now is that uh, We'll continue to uh, address uh, the drought through the National Drought Agency and, and continue to assess our current programs. Uh, and that's why it's important today that Shane Stone and his agency came together to make that assessment. And they'll be making recommendations on this program and a number of others that the federal government has put out. But also, uh, we made a commitment to bring together the states as well, because they have a role to play in this uh, just as much as we do. Uh, and back at the last Ministerial Council, Shane Stone was charged with the responsibility of coordinating uh, everyone's response from state and federal uh, to make sure that there wasn't overlaps, uh, that we were getting bang for buck and they were being targeted properly. Uh, he'll continue with that work but I do say the states again uh, again and again I keep on saying they can please complement us with our programs with complementing this by paying the rates of farmers and small businesses to these local councils to give them a rate holiday to take away the crown leasehold to take away payroll tax this is an opportunity for states to complement what the federal government's done this is our opportunity to lead with us to take our hand this isn't about politics this is about us all taking a stake in the future of these communities and working together.